Good morning. In the past couple of weeks, I've had the benefit of being able to talk to people who are watching us via the internet. So it's interesting today, sometimes when I look out in the audience, uh, the physical audience, I have to remind myself that there are also people that are tuning in at this moment in real time, and there are also people that will catch us sometime this week, that our community has grown, but our community looks and feels different because it's not something we can always see. So I'm glad to have you all in this space right now, those who are tuning in now, those who will tune in later. Welcome again to United Church of Hyde Park. We're on this theme of commitment, and today the sermonic theme is, I am not going to miss my shot. And you, um, a few seconds ago, heard from our scripture reader, uh, the gospel reading today. A few years ago, when I was going through a rough time in my own life, someone invited me to the NWBA Chicago Sky Basketball Games. At that time, when I went, you know, it was easy to go. They had some extra tickets. And I was hooked from the beginning. The only problem was my team wasn't all that really good. <laughs> it means I got hooked and I started supporting a team that uh, didn't win as many times as I thought they should win. Uh, which also is another way of saying that they lost a fair amount. I could see that they had potential because, right, they were my team, but it felt like they were a defective battery. Sometimes they played well, and sometimes it seemed like they were all over the map. Two years ago, we made it to the playoffs, and it was down to the seconds, and we were just like one point ahead. We were ahead, and there were 15 seconds left in the game. All we had to do was keep the ball or hold on to the ball. The ball was even on our side of the court. Vandersloot was running around in circles like a chicken with her head cut off. And somehow they got hold of the ball and within 15 seconds went down the other side of the court and put the ball in. Can I tell you that was a heavy moment for every Chicago Sky supporter? Like, oh my God, to taste victory and to be so close. And then in that moment to lose it, there was such a heaviness. This year, the Chicago Sky coach, who was named the coach of the year last year, signed on Candace Parker. We were surprised to get Candace Parker because she's a veteran in basketball. You know, she played for the LA Sparks, or maybe you didn't know she played for the LA Sparks, but we're surprised that she came to us because we're a team that's never won a championship game. And we're a team that really doesn't play or rank all that well, but we were able to pay her and we were able to recruit her and she came back home because Candace got her start here in Illinois. So it was that time, she said, and she chose to come back. However, this year, we were excited to have her back. More people started watching the game because Candace Parker is back, and she kind of was a personality in and of herself. But we started this season this year with three of our really good players healing. They were not playing, and it was looking like it was just going to be another bleak year. Just before the playoffs, we played the Las Vegas Aces, and you all, they beat the crap. It's one thing when you like lose or win by a couple of points. It's, not, it's another when they're major points. And Las Vegas just was creaming us. They were beating us. But we still finished out the season as number six. We barely made it on, but we were going to the playoffs. We were at the bottom of the pile, but hey, we were still going to the playoffs. And here we were playing. In the playoffs, I see, saw this team transform. And you have to be a Chicago Sky follower to really see it, but they became a whole different team and they began to win and they began to taste it. And they began to see that it was possible that perhaps they could win the championship and playoff after playoff, we won. We've only won lost one game to the Connecticut Sun and then, no, yeah, one game to them and we lost, lost one game. Now we're playing Phoenix, Arizona Friday was our third game against Phoenix, Arizona for the championship, and the arena was sold out. This was incredible. <clears throat> we were playing basketball the way I think basketball should be played, and oh my God, we rose from the ashes to be a team, to be a basketball team like none other. And on Friday, we set a record for the WNBA Finals with the game finishing up 86 to 50. Imagine being in a sold out arena with 86 to 50. In the fourth qu quarter, they set down all their A players. They knew it was over. 
Even the team members said it was so hard to concentrate because it was so loud. We were rising and we were jumping and with every shot, we were on our feet. Our mayor is a longtime supporter. She was there. But in the third, fourth quarter, even the governor walked in. Chance the Rapper were there. There were so many national celebrities there. I didn't know who they were, but people were taking pictures with people at half times, And it was just exciting. But here's the thing. This team has always taken the shot. And that's where I want to bring my message today. Some balls go in and some go out if you've watched basketball. You can see that some players, if they get to a certain location, it's almost a guarantee they're going to make it in. But whether they make it in or not, they still have to take the shot. Well, a couple years ago, we had Gabby on our team. And Gabby always hesitated when she took a shot. And so when the new coach came, he said, you know what your goal for this season is? To take the shot. He said, I don't want you to hesitate. Whether you, You're never, ever going to become a good player if you hesitate. And so his one goal for her that whole season, and you could see her taking the shot. She got a little bit better because I thought, too, you know, you don't know what's going to happen when Gabby takes it. But he kept pushing her because you can only get better at the shot if you keep taking the shot. That was her goal. There are times when things don't work and it doesn't go in, but then there are those magical moments when you take the shot and it goes in in the crowd war. You see, it's not about whether the shot goes in or not, but you got to take the shot and you got to hope for the best. You have to give life all you can. That's what basketball about. But that is what life is all about. I'm not going to miss my shot. None of us should miss our shot. I am not going to miss my shot. And you should not miss your shot. In the text today, James and John approach Jesus and say, look, can we get those courtside seats to the game today? They are rather expensive, but can you hook us up? Jesus, we want the best seats right next to you in heaven. And the other disciples find out. When the other disciples find out, they get angry. Now let us pause a minute and take a detour. From the perspective of John and James, they are just a bit shady trying to get in on the side. But can you blame them? I have been eyeing those seats all season. Those seats appear to look really good until the little baby girl got hit upside the head with the basketball. But they do look close. They look close to the action. They look like seats that I would want to have. There's a reason that those seats are expensive. There's a reason that there's security guards around those seats. There's a reason those seats get unlimited food. It's something about being close to Jesus that these two disciples think is not a bad idea. It's something about being in heaven eternally and sitting next to Jesus. And so they strategize on how to get those seats. And they use the only thing they got, their relationship with Jesus. What else would they use? If Jesus can't do it, who can? If Jesus can't fix it, who can? If Jesus can't make it happen, who can? If Jesus can't connect us, who can? If Jesus is not on our side, then how can we withstand? Not a bad angle at all. Jesus, this is our situation. And Mark gives us a more compassionate response from Jesus. Now, when the other disciples find out, the text says that the disciples got angry, and maybe rightfully so, I assume, but I don't know that they thought these, these guys got their nerves going behind our back, trying to slide up to Jesus for those seats. They might have been mad because they hadn't thought of the idea themselves. <laughs> maybe they were mad because they, <laughs> they didn't beat John and James to the, to the punch. They might have been mad because they perceived that these two were getting something that they were not getting. They might have been mad because they felt like it broke the brotherhood of teamwork. You might have a few thoughts yourself about why the other disciples got angry. We all have those triggers, things that get under our skin, things that rock us, things that push us, things that make us less than kosher, things that rub us the wrong way. And the disciples were angry with James and John, you two got real nerves asking Jesus for those courtside tickets. Jesus gathers them together and say, you know, for the Gentiles, greatness are leaders, and often those leaders dominate. They lord it over. This is how they lead. But real greatness, Jesus said, you guys, is serving. That's what real greatness looks like. Don't miss your shot to serve. Don't miss that shot. There will always be people looking to get courtside seats. 
There will always be those looking to be noticed. There will always be an attraction to fame and celebrity. There will always be an attraction to what looks like successful. There will be always an attraction to bling bling. When Chicago Sky was losing, you couldn't give away tickets, says someone who used to work for a sports agent. The seats were empty, but now that they are one game away, the arena is sold out. And James and John want front two seats. And the other disciples, the other disciples are like, you cut your nerve. Really, you guys. And Jesus says, you want to be great. You want to be great. Don't miss your shot. Don't don't miss this shot to serve. Martin Luther King Jr. put it this way, whatever your life work is, do it well. Even if it doesn't fall in the category of greatness, a human being should do their job so well that the living, the dead, and the unborn could not do it any better. If it falls your lot to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures, like Shakespeare wrote poetry, like Beethoven composed music, sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept, who served well. Don't crave this spot over here because it looks more public and popular. Do what God has given your hands and feet to do and do it well. Make sandwiches for the might ministry. Don't miss your shot in God's family to do your job well. Don't miss your shot. Don't, don't miss your shot. My second generation cousin was out there. She woke up one day as a kid and felt like she wasn't herself. She was not eating and not sleeping. She was in the streets at night. Truth is, mental illness runs in the family, but we never talked about it. Her family loved her, but they did not know what to do with her. She was just out there. We see that many times, people out there, and you can't quite catch them. You know something isn't right, but she was just a teenager, and she was messing up in the home and in school, and all of her teachers knew something was wrong. She was this sweet kid, but now she was this trouble kid, and one of the teachers pulled her to the side, and one teacher let her stay in class during lunch. And eventually, one took her to the guidance counselor and said, something is wrong with this child. And she was hospitalized, and at first they diagnosed her with anorexia because she couldn't sleep and she couldn't eat, and she couldn't have any peace of night. But once she got to outpatient, they rightfully diagnosed her as bipolar. The diagnosis for her was not something to reject. She said it actually brought relief because finally I had a name, and I had information for all that I had been through. She embraced this diagnosis. The mental health journey is actually longer and longer, and I can't share it all with you here today. But years ago, she lost one of her kids in her bipolar state. She gave her kid to someone, and when that kid was returned to her, both her arms as a baby was broken. DCFS took the custody of the child and took the child away. I knew as a former foster care supervisor, in my mind, she wasn't going to get that kid back. She had hit an all-time low, and she was broken, broken beyond, because she loved being a mother. Even though she was a pretty young mother, she loved it. And you know what? She began to take her shots. And I thought to myself, they ain't going to give you this baby back. But she kept coming on the court, and she kept taking her shots. And she kept saying, I want to get my baby girl back. And some balls went in and some did not, but she always stepped up to the plate and she always went to her visits and she always let that girl know, I love you and I'm going to get you back. And she kept working on her mental illness, so much so she became an advocate. And now she speaks on behalf of NAMI. And last week I got the chance to hear her actually share her testimony on NAMI as an advocate. And now she's been invited to speak other places and tell her story again. But really, really takes the cake is after all those shots she took, after the shots that went in and the shots that didn't go in, she is getting her baby girl back after seven years. Yes, you see, she never stopped taking the shots. She just kept taking the shots. And today we recognize that she's come from a long ways. And she's not that person she was seven, eight, ten years ago because she never gave up and she kept taking the shots. And just like Chicago Sky, when it looked like she wasn't doing nothing at all, she kept taking those shots, kept keeping, holding on to her faith, kept praying to God. You just got to keep taking those shots because you never know what's going to go in. Don't miss your chance to take the shots. When you keep taking the shots, God says, look at my child. 
When you keep taking the shots, your shots get better over time. You learn something about yourself, and after a while, you got to improve. When life throws you lemonade and you add some honey or whatever, it gets better. When you step up to the plate and you're willing. When life throws you mental illness and you say, what do I have to do with it? You don't miss your shot. Okay, we lost the game. Next, when you fail before failure after failure, so much show that failure has your name in its memory. But you say, not this time. I'm not going to miss my shot. Don't miss your shot. Don't miss your shot. Just keep stepping up and don't miss your shot. So when you want to throw in the towel and God throws it back and says, wipe your face off and let's go, don't miss your shot. So what, you're number seven. You're in the playoffs. Don't miss your shot. So what folks have given up on you, when folks have given up on you, don't miss your shot. When people don't get you, don't under quite understand how your clock ticks or how you work, don't miss your shot. When life's been hard and dealt you a set of hand that you don't know how you're going to win, don't miss your shot. Don't miss your shot to encourage another person. Don't miss your shot to make it right. Don't miss your shot to show up. Don't miss your shot to get on your feet. Don't miss your shot to put in a three-pointer. Don't miss your shot to not fail. Don't miss it. It might not go in, but it might go in, but that's not what it's about anyway. It's about taking the shot. All Jesus wanted the disciples to do is not miss their shot. Go out there and tell people about me. Go out there and lay loving hands on somebody because people need us to lay our loving hands on them. Go out there and eat with folks. Go out there and break bread with folks. Go out there and feed people fish. Go out there and tell someone the good news. Please stop talking about these seats and never, 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 ever miss your shot. Amen.